Okay, this is for the Harbor Freight 3200 watt generator. Stock condition, you've got 230 volts output. Across here is a hun the 110 volt coil, 120 volt coil. Here's the other 120 volt coil. They connect the two whites together. Got 240 volts across that. Okay, the AVR here, which is the control, let's control the voltage on that, looks at the two sense wires, the gray and the white. And just for argument's sake, there's roughly about 10 volts across this wire set and 10 volts on this tap. So when it's running here across the two senses, it's a roughly about 20 volts in the stock condition. And over here, you have 240 volts. So an unmodified condition you got 240 volts here across the entire set of wind, both windings in series. And then what the AVR is sensing here, which is the white and the gray, is looking at the 20 volts. And the AVR is what controls the voltage on the generator. It's got DC output to the brushes between 0 and 90 volts. You can use a voltmeter here, which is, this is a 120 volt DC power supply. This can be hooked up directly to the brushes here, and you can actually manually control it. But with an AVR here, in my previous video, I was talking about hooking these in parallel. Well, if you took the 120 volt coil and undo it the connectors and connect the white, these two in parallel, it's like this configuration over here. So this one here is exactly the same. White number two and black, white number two and black. Here's the 10 volt sense, the 10 volt sense. Put a V in here for voltage. So if I got 120 volts across this, roughly is 110 across this, 10 across this. We we'll take the top coil here, put it in parallel with this. They're in phase. I have to be in phase here because this is 240 volts across that. When I wire them in phase, the reason why in the previous video a lot of people got only 20 to 24 volts out is that this AVR now is looking between this wire and this wire in the unmodified case. So you've got 110 and 10 would be 120. Over here you have 10. 110 across here is 120. Well, that's all fine and dandy if you manually drove the brushes with the power supply here. But the AVR is seeing across these two. What you've got is between these two terminals, this is all in phase, would be 100 volts. It'd be 100 volts which is 120 minus 10 minus 10. It's not rocket science. And all these numbers are just relative. This may be 9 volts, so it might be 11. But anyways, this is 100 volts across this roughly when this is 100 across this. Well, the AVR is trying to look at this 20 volts for the control system. And since it only sees 20 volts here, instead of 100, you're going to get one-fifth the output out. So it's going to go through and dry, change the output to the brushes, drop it down so it sees 20 across this. Well, when there's 20 across this, you're only going to get about 24 across this. And that's why people have gotten 24 volts. Now, the dilemma is you could try to find an AVR that's going to run off 100 volts to put 120, which you're probably not going to be able to do unless you build your own. Or you can hook a small transformer across the 120 and then drop it down to 20 volts and directly feed this into here. So you've got this in the unit with the brushes, you've got the exciter wires which powers the unit, that's the two blues, and instead of hooking the white and the brown or gray here to the coil itself, you feed this yourself with another small transformer that's taking the 120 and dropping it down to 20 volts. I.e. you have 120 volt to 
20 volt transformer that you go ahead and you power this with. So if you take another transformer, 120 volts in, roughly 20 out, and then you feed this, and the 120 volts is hooked across this, then the AVR is going to go through and its goal in life is to keep this 20 volts here. You're going to get 120 out. So one simple way to do that is either screw around and try to get an exact transformer that's 20 volts. It could be a little bell transformer or you could hook a little train transformer that's a variable and adjust this to where you want to. Now the AVR has a control on the back. If, you don't, if it's off a little bit you can turn this uh, gizmo here. You can actually run this whole thing out of the generator if you're careful. You can have this into here, this plugged in, and you can turn this little pot with a screwdriver here to adjust the voltage also. But the specs on this say, one place I read say I think 16 to 20 volts and I'm not really sure how, how close that is, which means the nominal would be 18 volts. A lot of times you buy a transformer, the turns ratio may not be exact. So uh, having a variable transformer like a train transformer would, would be okay. You could probably shoot for an 18 volt transformer and then start it up and go through and adjust this pot to get it on the money. Again, you're hooking an external transformer up to here and then feeding the 18 volts in. That's one configuration. I'm getting you all confused. Another way is if you went ahead and connect the AVR between these two, uh, I'm not sure how if the AVR is totally isolated to do that. You're only getting 10 volts out. You'd have to bump the 10 volts to 20 and then feed the AVR from that. Just use one of the windings to one here, take the 10 volts. But my plan is to do this is probably just reuse a small transformer here, a little bell transformer. It doesn't really matter what you use and then back feed it through here. And this regulator here, as you can get them on eBay, is a 360 Ys and Young 025110. It's kind of funny. It says 1.3 to 3.2 kilowatts. The stator on this unit says 2.8 kilowatts. And that's why in this proposal that a lot of people have only been getting 20 volts across the entire unit because stock configuration with the Harbor Freight unit, it wants to see 20, 18 to 20 volts here for the 240. When you wire it, the two coils in parallel, because they have this on either side of the tap, you're getting 100 volts here. So the AVR basically wants to make this its goal in life is to make the sense voltage be 20, so it's going to drop the field current down, and that's why you only get 24 volts across this. So if 24 volts across here, this will be 20 here, and that's what the AVR was doing. So it has nothing to do that, that these two coils will parallel. It has to do that the way this is. Now, if you rewound the coil, like on some other generators, they actually bring a 20-volt 20, 20 coil out of here. If you pull the stator out and you had a coil was a 20 volt tap. And some of the older units did that and they didn't have one of these. And what they did is when this configuration they purposely used both sides of the coil so that it's going through an undistributed load. It's still trying to get this to be the average to be 120 across both. So if this one was totally loaded and this one didn't before in this configuration it's using both of them which is a little bit probably a better way to do it. I hope that answers the question why you, we've been only be getting 20 volts across this, the output on this, 20 to 24. It's because the way the sense coils are on both sides here, when it's put in parallel, unfortunately, these two add up to 100 volts.